One term we're hearing more and more these days is blockchain. Gary Meltzer had a chance to speak with PwC's Haskell Garfinkel and asked the important question, can you simplify what blockchain is for the masses? Take a listen. Well, you know, that's a, that's a tough question, <laughs> but we'll see if we can, uh, see if we can simplify it. Uh, I think a lot of people um, try to describe it in very technical terms. But maybe I can, I can give you some real simple analogies to describe what is blockchain. You know, I grew up in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, my mom was a, was a title checker, right? So her job was to go in and verify that uh, the titles had been transferred properly um, on real estate transactions. And when you think about that, there's these big ledger books going back to the 1700s where, you know, Mr. A had transferred title to Mr. B. Um, and those books are kept in a centralized repository. Um, and what a title checker does is make sure that those transactions have been validated. Uh, and what has to happen uh, in a situation like that is all the parties have to go to one place. And that's the government office. And in South Carolina, it's called the Register of Means Conveyance Office. And every party who wants to make sure that those titles have been uh, validly checked has to go to that office. And I grew up in that hot and sweaty office, Gary, and, and trust me, it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun going there all the time. And if you think about what a blockchain technology is, it's a way to take those type of records and not force people to go to one central repository to look at them, but a way to take those records and give them to everybody, give them to the entire population of people who would seek to validate those records and distribute them amongst all the parties who might want to host them. And when you try to go validate them, you validate them amongst all of the parties, not just at one central repository. And if we try to change any one of those records, all of the parties have to change the records at the same time. But instead of them being kind of written in ink in all of those ledgers, they immediately change on everyone's books and records all at the same time. So I can't make a change without everybody else making a change. That's what the underlying technology of the blockchain really does. So one of the things that comes to mind when I hear you describe that is the issue of security. Right. Okay, because there's so many different participants that are out there potentially changing simultaneously. So how does security play into this type of technology? Well, that really is the core of the security of the blockchain. Because what happens is, as each one of us in the chain make that change at the same exact time, if any one of us doesn't make that chain, a transaction gets rejected. And it says that the transaction is invalid. So if you think about tens of thousands of people who simultaneously have to make that change, if one person doesn't make that change, and I go to check to see if that record is in fact valid, and one person hasn't made that change, then all of a sudden that transaction gets rejected as, as not valid. So some, like the Bitcoin protocol, which I think a lot of people have heard about, there's been, you know, that's one of the great public use cases of the blockchain. That was publicly available to anybody. Um, that's, a, that's a public ledger. So anybody can use it. Um, that's a, a non-permissioned ledger. And there's some where you and I could decide amongst ourselves, we're the only two people who can access it. So this is why it's a very transformative and powerful technology to use amongst financial services institutions, because 20 financial services institutions could get together and say, we're the only ones who are going to let each other look at these transactions and no one else can come in. And how do we see this from a, a regula regulatory perspective and how the regulators are looking? Because this can obviously be transformative yeah. as it relates to transactions. So I've had a number of conversations with uh, the ECB, yep. um, with folks at the Fed, um, with folks in the UK, regulators of the UK, and, and they're, they're very keenly looking at this, um, not just from a how is it going to transform the financial services industry, but as a powerful regulatory tool. Because one of the things they think it may do is actually give them you know, real-time access to the flow of information and for them to step in to the ecosystem and be able to watch information flow in a far more powerful and transparent way than they have today.